So do you just want to state your name and your title? I'm Chip Chandler. I'm the Senior Communication Specialist for West Texas A&M University. And where did you grow up and what schools did you attend? I uh, grew up in Canadian, Texas. Um, graduated from there. Then went to college at Southwestern Oklahoma State University. How have your early experiences influenced your perspective and career choices? Hmm, okay. Um, so for most of my professional career, I've been a journalist. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think uh, the primary influence on that was my hometown newspaper, the Canadian Record. Uh, it was a family-run operation um, my entire childhood. Um, still, still, run, still in the family, they've stopped print publication, unfortunately. But uh, the editor when I was a kid was uh, Benny Zell. Uh, and was just a giant in Texas journalism. Uh, just really, truly admired him uh, and everything he did when I was a kid. And then his daughter, Lori, is a, is a dear friend of mine. And so between the two of them and the influence that they had on me, I made it, made it a no-brainer that I wanted to go into journalism. So why did you decide to come to WT? The, I saw that the job was open. Um, I was looking for a change. I've, like I said, I've been a journalist for a long time, and it's nice to get out of that, the heat of that business, but still be involved. Um, I've had a lot of experience working with journalists over the years. I've done, I've had a couple of other jobs that had a little bit of communications uh, and media relations as part of the, part of the job duties, and I enjoyed that, those parts. Uh, so saw that this job was open, and it sounded like a great fit. I already knew a lot of people at WT. I've been covering. Uh, the arts at WT for many years, uh, and so fortunately uh, they hired me. Could you provide an overview of your role and responsibilities for your job? So I um, am the primary contact for any media, any external media. Um, if uh, we have any interview requests um, or um, for a specific topic or if they're looking for an expert to speak on something, I'm the one that coordinates that. Um, I make pitches uh, to journalists around the area, uh, potential I story ideas if they're just looking for, for a story idea that's not necessarily a full news release. And of course I write all of the, the news releases for the or most of the university news releases and, and distribute those. I also um, do a lot of internal communications including campus emails, uh, faculty, staff newsletter, um, help with our marketing efforts, things like that. <laughs> so, outside of the workplace, what hobbies do you have? I guess my number one ho hobby is, and it's, it's kind of sounds weird, but it's, it's the movies. Um, really, though, the Oscars. Um, it's always been a passion of mine. Um, or as, for as long as I can remember. I can't even remember the first year I watched the Oscars ceremony, but I don't when we were not watching the Oscar ceremony every year. Uh, when I was at the Amarillo Globe News um, on really my second, well, my first time there, I worked in two, worked at the Globe News over the course of 20 years uh, in two different, in two different um, time periods. Uh, and I uh, started an entertainment section uh, with a team, a weekly pull-out entertainment section, and was doing movie reviews. And one of my colleagues and I, um, did a little back and forth chat about the Oscars one year mm -hmm. uh, in just the major categories. And I, was, I would try to see everything in the major categories. Well, I, after I accomplished that, I just kept getting a little bit more and more ambitious. So when I went back to the newspaper in 2010, I think, I uh, started trying to see every film nominated for an Oscar. And that's usually around, in the neighborhood of 50 to 55 films oh, wow. every year, including all the short films, international films, documentaries. Uh, and as someone who would write about movies, I had a little bit more access to publicists and try to get screeners and, and things like that, that if they weren't, if the movie didn't come to Amarillo, I could still maybe see them in, in that way. I tried to never go the, the illegal streaming, lime wire, whatever route, um, but uh, for my official, it's, people who do this, it's called the Oscar death race. <laughs> Because you're just trying to plow through. You only have about six weeks between the time the nominations are announced and the award ceremony wow. to try to get them all in. Just, if you haven't already seen a bunch of them before. So I tried it every year and I got just tantalizingly close for several years. And then uh, at my last job at Panhandle PBS, um, I got to join a national film critics group called uh, the Gay and Lesbian Entertainment Critics Association, the LECA. And they would send me movies like 
without asking. Just the, the companies, the film distributors would uh, take the list of members and just send them either video uh, links to watch them online or they have some of the comp film studios have special apps uh, with private access to watch any of their films that they've that they put on there uh, or they've sent in DVDs too so for a couple of years there I had I had access to virtually everything so I was able to finish the death race I think only twice I was just looking that up I think I finished it uh, in 2018 and 2020 so that's three of the films nominated in 2017 and the films nominated in 2019 um, last year I missed five because I didn't really try that hard uh, the year before I missed one uh, this year I'm on track doing pretty good I have seen uh, let me let me just double check again totally messing up your shots sorry about that um, so yeah so there's 53 films nominated this year I as of now I've seen 35 of those so that's 18 left 10 of those are live action or animated short films and those always screen at the Cinemark uh, the weekend Oscar weekend so I'll see those 10. Um, probably looks like there's going to be five that probably won't be available to see. Um, two of them definitely don't have a distribution deal in the United States yet. Um, and then three of them are international films. And maybe one of them will show up on a streaming service or a rent yeah. that I can rent. But yeah, that's, that's my hobby. If I've got Google Docs going back God, 10 years or more. <laughs> of every film that I've seen. I also keep ongoing lists of all the Best Picture nominees over the years. Director, actor, actress, supporting actor, supporting actress, original screenplay, adapted screenplay. I think that's all the ones that I try to go through. I've seen every film that has been that has won Best Picture. That's 75 plus now. Um, I've seen almost all of those not, and there's some that are just a couple of them that just don't exist anymore they're old silent films that they weren't preserved um i've seen all, i've seen a ton there are many i could i've even i'll even track this is how much of a nerd I'm, i'll track how many years i've completed um i haven't come i've i'm not quite through with all of the actor or actress winners but i'm really really close on all and all of those as well as well as the nominees it's a sickness. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cool, honestly. Ooh, top three favorite movies and why? Okay. It can change from day to day, but I think my letterbox for... I, th I can tell you for sure three of my letterbox for, because letterbox will get, is an app, online app, where you can rate movies, mm -hmm. keep track of, what, of things that you've seen. Um, and so I know Singing in the Rain is on there. It's my... All time, I love musicals, um, and, and I love Hollywood stories, and it's both, and it's just incredibly well made, always hysterically funny to me. Um, great catchy tunes. It's got an Amarillo native Citrus in it, so that's number one. The Wizard of Oz, um, my childhood favorite, still watch it regularly. Just absolutely love that movie, um, and. Probably just to get a more recent one in there, Call Me By Your Name. Um, that was nominated for Best Picture in 2018, came out in 2017. I've seen, I can't even tell you how many times I've seen it just in the, the last five, six, seven years, whatever, how many years ago that was. I just, it just really kills me every time I see it. Love it. <laughs> What's your go-to movie snack? For a long time, I, I would go review movies at the newspaper, sometimes see two in a night even three in a night, just boom, boom, boom. Um, and I wouldn't get snacks or drinks. <laughs> you were working. Yeah, I was working. Uh, and I was getting paid for the ticket, not for, or getting reimbursed for the ticket, not for the snacks. So, <laughs> uh, but now if I go, I usually grab like the sweet tart ropes or something like that, just something a little sweet and a little sour and a Topo Chico. Or if it's in the evening time at the cinema, I'll, use, I'll sometimes get a drink. Who's your favorite director? Probably Richard Linklater, who did um, Dazed and Confused, um, School of Rock, the um, Before trilogy, Before Midnight, no, Before Sunrise, Before Sunset, 
and Before Midnight, uh, just a beautiful little trilogy of movies about a, a couple over the decades. Um, I just, I just, and he did Boyhood also. I just like his style. He's, he's kind of laid back, chill. Also, uh, Robert Altman, um, who was active from the 50s through the early 2000s. He directed the film version of MASH. Um, he did Nashville, which is another one of my all-time favorite films. Um, the Player, Shortcuts. He has huge ensembles and not, generally not like a, not a plot-driven film, but a character-driven film. And, and his, the worlds that he built were always fascinating. What's your favorite Oscars in the last years? I mean, I will never forget the year that Moonlight won over La La Land and Warren Beatty and Faye Dunaway read the wrong name for the best picture and had to try to quickly correct themselves. And I mean, it was, I mean, obviously you don't want that to happen, but it was a great memorable moment, much better than when Will Smith had his little temper tantrum, <laughs> for example. Um, I can remember the angriest I think I've ever been was when the movie Crash won Best Picture over Brokeback Mountain uh, and four and three other fine nominees. I hate the movie Crash with a fiery passion. Um, if I were ever to rank the Best Picture winners, it would be probably at the bottom. Maybe. There was there was one movie called Cimarron, I want to say like 1931, that's just the most boring western that I've ever seen. It's just so long and Nothing of import happens at all, but I hate Crash even more than that. <laughs> so, do you have any other hobbies? I'm a physical media collector as well. I collect movies on Blu-ray or, or DVD. Um, there's a great line of, of Blu-rays, the Cl Criterion Collection. Um, they've been around for a long time, and uh, they'll pick about five movies every month to add to the collection. Um, they all have a different spine number. Um, sometimes. I, maybe th between three and five new movies every month. Then they'll do reissues on either Blu-ray or now 4K Ultra of movies that have already been in the collection. Um, so I collect those and I have them organized by spine number. Um, I have an app that tracks my entire movie collection. Um, I can put in there if, some, if I've loaned it out to somebody. Um, I know exactly where it is in my apartment. I have a giant spinner full of movies as well as stacks <laughs> of films. And I can just, uh, do I own that movie? Because I can't remember now that I have more than 2,000 movies on oh, wow. physical or digital copies. Um, where is that movie? <laughs> um, and you know, if I've loaned it out or whatever. Of course, I don't loan out something you never loan out something with it to a friend with the expectation that you'll ever get it back. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you stay motivated in, and inspired in both your career and hobbies? Okay. Um, because I was a journalist for so long and a daily news journalist for so long, I just thrive on deadline pressure. So I love to write. I can write a news release really fast. Um, if I need to take my time, I will take my time. Um, but if we, something gets thrown on my desk, I'm, can get something knocked out in 20 minutes and I just love that feeling. Um, but I also love just the opportunity to share the stories of, of what's going on at WT. Whether it's our students who are doing fantastic things, whether it's our faculty and staff members who are doing great research or are doing wonderful things in their community or with our student population. Um, or if, if it's our donors who are generous enough to give to our ongoing One West campaign and help propel us into the future. I love kind of telling those stories and making sure other people hear those stories and working with our local media, regional media, and even national media to help spread the word of the great things that are going on here. Cool. And finally, what advice do you have for students trying to balance academics and personal passions? Okay. You've got to make time for, for yourself. Self-care is, is extremely important. Um, I've always been a hard worker uh, when I was a the newspaper uh, and covering the arts, I would go review um, every local production, I would, as well as movies, as well as go see uh, bands and comedians and keep, 
as fully immersed into that scene as possible. So, I mean, that's obviously that's a lot of fun, but it's also time consuming and it takes away from things. Um, I had always made time just to, just to chill whenever I could. Um, now that I don't have to do that, I still do some entertainment coverage for Brick and Elm magazine. So there's a little freelance uh, gig. Um, but I don't, that's just letting people know what's going on. I don't have to do a review. I don't have to get out there as much in the scene. Just, I just need to keep abreast of it. And digital media, social media makes that so much easier these days. So I just find my time to rest. You know. Um, you can't, you can't, you're not doing yourself any good or anybody else any good if you burn out doing your job or doing your studies. <laughs>